Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin and we have a bit more of a fancy setup here today. I'm actually using my brother's Canon 600D that he's lent me while he's overseas. So thank you Adam for letting me use your camera so we can get a bit more of a high quality uh, setup on the show. Now today we're going to be looking at the i7 4790K Devil's Canyon. And I'm going to be putting it up against the i7-4770K. Now, if you watch the other channel I host, Playtech TV, you will know that I've already covered that, uh, this, this comparison on that channel. However, I just wanted to do it for myself and uh, do it for this channel also. So, what is the difference between the i7-4790K Devil's Canyon and the uh, i7-4770K? Well, there's not much difference. They're essentially, they are the same CPU. The 4790K is sort of like an updated model. It's the same thing, it just they tweaked a few things. So, some of those things are they added extra capacitors on the back of the CPU that you can see. Uh, this is to help smooth out power, should, should help in a few areas like that. They also upgraded the thermal interface material, so this is under the uh, middle cap on top of the CPU uh, that, that separates the, the middle cap and the die. They've added a different thermal material there and that's to help bring down temperatures because that was the big problem with the uh, 4770K and other Haswell processors as they just ran so hot and a lot of people were actually delitting them to change that thermal interface material themselves uh, underneath on the die itself. Uh, so Intel's already done that so we'll see uh, what temperature differences that makes. And they also bumped up the CPU frequencies, so the 4790Ks are a little bit more cherry picked. Um, so they come in at 4 gigahertz off turbo and 4.4 gigahertz on turbo, uh, compared to the 4770K, which came in at 3.5 gigahertz off turbo and 3.9 gigahertz on turbo. So obviously these are K processors, so they're unlocked, so you'd only buy them if you were going to overclock. If you're not going to overclock them, you may as well just get the non-K, like the 4770 or something like that. So there's no point benching these at their stock frequencies, because anyone who buys them is obviously going to be overclocking. Now, with that being said, I set both of these to 4.4 GHz, which is the standard for the 4790K, but an overclock for the 4770K and I set them both at 1.28 volts now on the CPU core itself. So voltage is what gives the heat. So if I set them at the same voltage, they should that should give us the best comparison to how uh, much temperature change there is between the two of them. Now I use the same thermal paste on both, not to a thermal paste, and I have the exact same color, my uh, Corsair H110, this is uh, running Noctua NF-A14 fans on it instead of the crappy stock H110 fans. Then I went into Intel Extreme uh, Tuning Utility and ran the CPU stress test for 15 minutes and I took the highest temperature that they went to. And uh, the 4770K rose to a temperature of 79 degrees Celsius. That was the highest peak temperature I saw out of it where the 4790K only rose to 72 degrees Celsius. So that's pretty impressive. That's what, a 7 degree difference uh, just from the thermal interface material change? So that's really good. And that means that, you know, you have more thermal headroom when you do overclock. You know, 7 degrees is a nice amount to play with, um, having that extra gap there. So that was very good. Now, the max overclocks. So, my 4770K will only go to, it, it, it doesn't really like going above 4.6 gigahertz. So, it'll be happy there, although it starts, it's a little bit toasty at 4.6. However, uh, the 4790K overclocked all the way up to 4.9 gigahertz and it was actually stable there. And that was at a voltage of uh, 1.435, I believe. So, getting up there in the voltages, but, um, yeah, and, and I mean, you, I'm not fantastic at overclocking, as I've stated before, so you could probably do a lot better job than I did. Uh, but, yeah, so, so I got it to 4.9 stable, so 
they're definitely a beast. Um, it was getting a bit toasty, even with my H110 on there. Uh, when I did the CPU stress test, it rose all the way to 90... Uh, 5 degrees Celsius I believe. Um, I was kicking a lot of voltage through it so that, that was getting up there in temperature. However, the, in theory a 4790K should overclock a lot better than a 4770K due to the um, improvements it has. Now, who would I recommend the 4790K to? Well, I'll say the exact same thing as I said in my Playtech TV video when I covered these CPUs. I'd recommend the 4790K to anyone that was considering buying a 4770K for their rig as you know a new build or an upgrade. It, it pretty much replaces it, so there's no real reason to buy a 4770K anymore. Um, if you already have a 4770K, just like me, would I say upgrade? No, I'm not going to upgrade unless your 4770K is an absolute dog of an overclocker and it just won't overclock at all, then maybe consider it, but if yours is like mine and it'll still go to say 4.6, but I just set mine at 4.4 because nice, um, you know, I just find a nice, stable, safe amount for it, it doesn't get too toasty or anything like that, then there's really no point in upgrading uh, to the 4790K. Now, that's going to round out this video. I hope it was informative. If you want to watch uh, my Playtech TV video where I covered these CPUs, I'll leave that link in the description below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time on Tech Showdown.